I offered you, like, I like tech trading because it's actually quite good to move us forward. Well, well the thing that's nice, these star techs, those are from technologies where there are multiple choices. And so if you choose something else, then you can never get this one. So there's something to be said about grabbing some of these from time to time. Ooh, yeah, no, you're not willing to. It's sorted by cost. It seems kind of, kind of poor. I think, I think we'll come back to it. We can boost our diplomatic skills and maybe we'll be able to um, get some sort of better deal out of these guys. Okay, so Garden of Sinners, Garden of Super Unhappy People, uh, we're going to go and build you a healing pool somewhere. Yeah, and again, we're going to build the Intimidation Center at some point. Um, but I want to rush it with money, and I don't think we're going to have enough for it. So healing pool, can I rush you? No. It's way too expensive. Well, work on it anyway, and we'll see what we can do. Yeah, I don't know why it's multi-spamming the subs all the time. Twitch be Twitch! We're not doing elections, so morale is not as bad as it could be. Oh! Oh, we found the Galactic Bazaar! So, this is a place where we can spend money to get, like, some really funky ships that do all kinds of... Some are just, you know, generic combat ships or this or that, but a lot of them will have some sort of funky effect, like the Fencer. Gives us 100% influence per turn at any star base the ship is stationed at, and so on and so forth. So, if you got money to spend, you can access the bazaar and get some cool stuff. We found some more planets, although... Oh, wait, Borissa 2, or 1, we're about to get. Clapunet might be a little inconveniently placed. It's also only a class 8. But you can see here with the, um, the Squidian territory over here. Hmm... One foreign ship in your territory without permission. It's probably, yeah, I think it's just a squid ship over here. Patriotic celebrations, we get a resistance to invasion. I guess that's fine. So yeah, we don't have open borders, and they're within our territory, but I don't think I'm too concerned about that. It's just a, it's just a scout. Um, we're going to want to grab this antimatter over here, or this Illyrium over here at some point, but we can wait for it. It's clearly within our borders. I think what I'm going to do is grab this Thulium over here before the Squidians do. And what is this? Oh, that's the Bazaar. Okay. We... Uh, okay, Garden of Sinners has crap production. Like, I could spend the money to do a rush, but I think it might be best, actually. Well, first of all, I'm actually going to get the, um, the healing pools to happen first. I'm going to go and build a mining base over here. I think the boost production will be good. We've got all these. Let me go and do our secondary planets first. I'm going to build those asteroid mines. Do I want to do them all? I guess so. We're losing money right now, right? Yeah. Okay. Let's wait on Quilly. Its production is still currently okay. We'll get those built up. Did you go and steal my gur Rage. Ooh. Oh, the salt is real. Ugh. You squidian bastards. We're one turn away from grabbing that planet. And he's gonna settle this planet. Wow, they are super expansionist. So we're gonna have to sort of wander around with this colony ship and hope we find something else. It's treason then. Um, we could build a bunch of influence stuff on Kane and see if we can just flip these guys. It's cool stream. Does that mean doesn't that always mean war? We can culture flip in this game. There are options. Pacifism just became pacifyism. <laughs> We were researching military tech for a reason, I suppose. The thing is, there's a lot of good baseline stuff we'd want. I think, like, invasion is still sort of a little far for us to pull off. So if we're going to get that planet, it probably will just be by flipping him. Can we get a bonus to influence from here? Yeah. So influential voice, we can take that and get plus one influence growth. Let's do that and just see if we can apply enough pressure here. We're getting bonus influence from this starbase. Um, ooh, I can expand it a starbase market for now. We'll wait. Kane's doing that, which I guess is okay. Um, influence stuff. Intimidation Center provides influence, which is nice. And we're going to be building that somewhere. 
over here. We'll still probably put the healing pool down. Okay, starbase here, mining ring. Uh, oh, we have access to mining barracks now. Takes a little bit of money and some durantium, but we can get more resources. And money's a little tight. Let's wait on that right now before we upgrade things. Uh, religious groups seen fit to honor civilization, most responsible for improving the welfare of sentient beings. Apparently we're third best. There's our first Illyrian mine. It looks really funky. Build an influence ring. Yeah, well, we, we need a separate uh, star base for that, but uh, we probably will build an influence star base up there. An unnatural glow fills the mining ship as it draws in the first batch of the mysterious substance, Illyrium. It's a material that seems to amplify high energy systems. It will be vital for high energy beam weapons and certain domestic applications. We also got our first antimatter mine. Your first, the first of your antimatter mining probes, little more than an engine with a scoop, returns from the surface of oblivion with its precious cargo. Having resisted all efforts to synthesize it, antimatter is critical for advanced explosive-based weaponry and power generation. So we're going to get some more resources accruing over time. Son of a... Mm. So much salt. I'm still thinking about sitting on some money just to avoid some problems, but I don't know. Let's go ahead and build a couple mining bases. I guess I should have built that earlier. It's not much of a window. We're going to be broken about 10 turns. But maybe we can improve our finances by then. Shipyard is idle. Uh... Okay, we're going to get three freighters, because that's our limit for trade ships right now. And getting trade up and running will be good. Currently, our only people we'll be able to trade with are the Musquidians, and I guess that will have to do. So construction ship here, I could move it up here and build an influence ring in this area. And I guess that'll be okay. We don't really have any other resources to snag super short term, so we'll do that. I believe star bases can be within four tiles of each other. It's something like that. This constructor is going to get popped. Mining ring. Okay. That'll be thulium. Your miners begin offloading the first load of thulium. Surprisingly dull looking, it's only in higher dimensions that thulium shows its true character and it, its incredible density. As, as a stable form of neutronium, it has many practical uses. This will become vital both for new types of kinetic weapons and numerous peaceful applications. This is a huge map, actually. Which is really only medium size in this game. The map can get really big here. All right, research complete. So we get the influence growth. And then every now and again, like as you unlock text, it revamps some of your previous ship designs automatically. But we'll be doing a little bit of manual stuff for that. Getting the space labs might be handy. It's pretty expensive. I don't know if we need to rush out, like, better thrusters or anything like that for our ships. Again, we're going to build some defensive ships, but that's it. We could... You know, support a population just gives us a flat plus one morale. It's which means we can tax people more. Hey, Fang! Thank you very much! Funds for the upcoming war effort! Thank you very much, Fang. Really appreciate your support. Musquidian. Big horns and snout with lots of arms, legs. I'll show you their picture in a second, actually. It's based on something that happened in Dwarf Fortress a long time ago, and someone, uh, Agamita, ma made some great fan art of it. I'm going to do that. I mean, we've got some things. Oh, this is, we can unlock Planetary Invasion. Or, this leads to Planetary Invasion. But I don't think we're going to have to do that. Just unlocking defense systems actually might be the most valuable thing. You know, I'll grab the supportive population. The morale boost is super handy. So we now have the ability to get Entrepreneur Specialists, which boosts our economy a fair bit. But I think I'm going to keep going with the Science Boost. Because Science is pretty good. Um, and I'll actually settle this one on Kane over here, because Kane's going to be pretty good science-wise. At some point, we'll just leave them in the Global Pool, but yeah. Uh, approval's starting to go down a little bit over here, because we're starting to get a little bit packed on our, um, our population. But approval's going to take a jump up shortly, so that's going to be okay. How's the combat? Combat is basically like civilization. You know, you run one fleet into another. You can go into full cinematic mode and see the combat, how it resolves itself. 
There's a lot of little mechanics for it. This is my colony ship that's just exploring here. Ah, we met the Altarian Resistance! Our civilization has flourished for thousands of years. We know of powers that you cannot even imagine. We're so pleased to meet you. Our first freighter is here. So I believe the amount of money that you get from freight is based on the population between the source planet and the target planet, as well as maybe distance. Anyway, I, this is Squidia. This is their capital over here. It's going to probably likely be the first thing that grows very much. So we're going to go ahead and just send a trader over there and start to accrue a little bit of money from it. Oh, I like it. This is like, this is our leader. This is our transport unit. Our leader is actually having to go from one planet to another. And um, I, think, I think they can get blown up too. Trade offer. Okay. Open borders. They'll give us improved logistics and xeno manufacturing. That's six turns worth of research. In exchange for experimentation, influential voice, and planetology, which is ten turns worth of research, and they want money. You know what? We have opposing ideologies. Mm, we're not going to be friends. I think I'm still going to do one trade over here, because it'll give us a fair boost forward, and doesn't help the Musquidians. And that think that's going to be good for us right now. So we're going to do that. So we got some extra tech and things. Um, oh yeah, I can't. I don't have any money. <laughs> we really don't have money. We're going to have to turn up taxes soon. I guess I'll do that now. <laughs> uh, yeah, we need we need more freight ships. Need to connect all your own space. Well, I mean, our borders will grow. But yeah, we'll probably end up putting like a random star base over here just to try to connect it up a little bit better. You are going to give me Promethean in exchange for tech. No. Musquidians. I'm not liking these guys. And yeah, there's no way they don't declare war on us soon. What is that? Is that? Oh, that's a, a cultural relic. We need to get a star base out here ASAP to be able to work that. A freighter is being built, which I guess is still fine. Yeah, we might not have much of a choice. So, I don't think we know where the Altarians are. So, we'll just send another freighter to Musquidian space right now. We just need to get trade routes up and running. So, this constructor over here... Okay, we can construct. Good. Oh, you can construct shipyards this way. I didn't realize you can construct shipyards. That's cool. So, we're going to build it here. And this is, in fact, going to have a cultural ring, which gives more influence. And we can keep upgrading this with stuff. And what we're going to do is we're going to try to culture flip this planet. It's going to be a challenge, but we're going to try our best. Can someone Photoshop Quill's face into that badger that's saying, come at me, bro? <laughs> nice. All right, plus one morale. That'll help offset the tax rate. Um... We might want to get Xeno Economics as well. Or Cultural Exchange. I think we're going to focus on this culture stuff. This culture stuff. And we're going to try to see what we can do about flipping this thing over here. Our unescorted colony ship. This is fine. The higher influence will also help us um, con connect up our space. Shipyard is idle. So, oh, what we need are more constructors, but we don't have any administrators. We may have to turn a leader into an administrator. We could get more scouts. We're, we're going to be capped on freighters. We can still build them, but we can't have more trade routes right now. So we're going to start building defensive ships. And we might we might as well go and just like design our own. Let's go ahead and, and design our ship from scratch over here. So we're going to have a new design. Boom. Now, we've got a few options. We could we could literally start with just like, um, oh, not cargo, small. We could start with like this little cube. Where, can we not, does it not show it? Oh, right, I guess you do this and then you can just like start attaching random bits. There it is, yeah, so it's there, it just wasn't visible. And it's like Lego style. So this, these like whole bits and you can just, you know, make your own design from scratch. I'm not doing a very good job. But yeah, you can just keep building. I think you can turn symmetry modes on and off. Um, 
There we go. Symmetry along the horizontal axis. And you can just build your ship. Which is kind of cool that this is a thing that you can do. But I have not a single artistic bone in my body. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and delete all those. And I'm going to start with one of the sort of pre-designed hulls. One of these. Now, this is still, you can still build this up bit by bit. You can rip some parts off as well, right? Like, oh, I'm going to get rid of these little winglings on the end and just get rid of that. There we go. Hey, guys, I have customized a ship. I am super fancy at this. And, and that's fine. Now, this is purely cosmetic. These, these parts over here for the hull, 100% cosmetic. I do like that you can, like, just we'll just build a giant sphere. It's like, that's kind of cool. Um, I don't know. If I did say that. Great glowing balls. I think people might get the wrong idea about the ship. On the other hand, I mean, they look like power sources or shield generators or... Or fuel tanks? I don't know. Whatever. Here, we'll put that one in. That's going to be okay. Now, the real stuff you do is the equipment over here. So, we have 39... I think it's mass. I was going to say space, but I think it's mass over here. And this is just a part... Uh, this is just because of the ship size we chose over here. And we can fit a, a variety of different goods on them. Now, we don't have that many things unlocked right now, but we've got a few. Now, we could make this into a colony ship by just plopping down a colony module on it. Now, if we don't want it, like, visually to be there, we, we don't have to. What we could just do, if I just double-click on it, Oh, it's too heavy to mount. I literally can't fit it on here. I would have to start with a cargo hull. Um, but if you don't want to put it like on your design because you're happy with the way it looks, if you just double click on something, like let's say we get some guns over here, right? So space rockets, I can put them on or I can just go and double click. It'll just get added to the list over here. It's, it's somewhere in this ship. So we've got that. Done and done. Not the size that matters. Send the front longer. Oh my God, you guys are perverts. And you can reshape things though. I mean, in all seriousness, right? You can, they can rescale things. Um, can you stretch them? Animate rotation? Like you can make ships that move and things. There's offset. Oh, you can turn off proportional scaling. There we go. So. Actually, that's kind of cool with like the sharp sort of razor blade look in the front. I mean, it's a weird looking ship. It's odd. Spaceships can be odd. They don't have to follow your classic design whatevers, you know? Here, we'll leave that on there. So we're gonna have to choose what kind of weaponry we're gonna have. So we have access to missile weapons. So space rockets over here. We also have enhanced missile weapons. So the spare missiles require one antimatter to build, whereas the regular space rockets don't. Space rockets are worth missile attack one. The sparrow rockets are worth two. The range and accuracy, everything as far as I can tell exactly the same, except the Sparrow Missile does, the Sparrow Missile does plus one damage, or another way to look at it, but the Sparrow Missile does double damage over here. Um, we've also got access to an enhanced laser, which requires Illyrium. We don't have a basic laser. We also have a basic railgun here, which is gonna take Thulium, because it's an enhanced one as well. I think you need to research more to get sort of the baseline version of it. So right now we're starting to crew a fair amount of Durantium. We've got some antimatter, we've got some Thulium, some Illyrium. The thing is, I mean, I don't know if we're going to be able to spam this out. And we're, really what we want to do is we have a, want to have a good collection of ships. I think what we're going to do is we're going to get a sort of missile ship or a, f a small fleet of missile ships parked around each one of our planets. Um, I'm not going to add engines. I'm not going to add any range boosters to them. They're just going to be meant to defend a planet. So we're going to give them some missile packs over here. We have no defensive tech right now. We might want to wait actually until we've unlocked some defensive tech before we start working. Life support modules give you more range. We can add more sensors so we can see further. Um, survey module, stasis field module, increases the range of all ships in the fleet, which is interesting. Oh, Tholium hull reinforcement. We could spend Tholium to get a stronger hull. So right now our missiles the space rockets take 21.6 mass. We can't put a second one on and we don't have access to armor. So we get a ship with a single missile attack and no other stats. I think it's too early for us to design a ship. So I'm just, uh, hold on. Tell you what, I will save the ship just so that we have the look of it saved over here. It's battle roll. Well, just putting it on escort is going to be fine. We'll just save that. That's going to be okay. 
We'll have to give it another name, a proper name, once we got some weapons. But you can see we've got a few designs over here. They're basically both the same. Both of these require, they've just got the, the antimatter Illyrium requirement over here. One's the tiny hull and one's the small hull over there. So we're just going to leave this in here so that we've got our beautiful looking ship and we'll come back to it in a bit um, after we get some defense stats. I mean, we might want to build a couple of ships just to say we've got them in case some pirates show up, but I don't know. We got a third freighter ready to go. I think what I'm going to do is sort of randomly send it out in some other direction. Oh, there's another ascension crystal over here. What I'm really hoping to do is find... Right, I guess we were idle. That's part of the problem. Okay, you know what? Start building me some defenders. Hopefully we can get some administrators soon for some more uh, um, star bases. We can upgrade this to a new design once we've got something available. Oh, we'll keep it going. To be fair, streaming Eve is normally detrimental to playing Eve. That is true. So this colony ship is also just buzzing around randomly, hoping that we find a, a planet that can be colonized. Sort of doing some scouting for us, but scouting without sensors is kind of crappy. And we're about to run out of money. So I think we got to raise taxes again. Well, I mean, we're, we're going to lose money regardless. And there's this whole, like, there's sort of optimizing around morale for production and things. Oof. Oof. We might just go bankrupt, you guys. Maybe we'll have to research Xenoeconomics right now to be able to unlock a few more things. It'll help. Once our trade routes get established, that'll help a lot. So we'll have to run negative money for a little while. It's just the way it's going to have to be. Um... This ship, we're going to go and get it to park around Quilia. So we've got our first ship. You can have your fleets orbit around a planet and just be ready to defend. Now, our survey, every now and again, we find some random stuff. So we get some random money every now and again. Oh, uh, we can't run missions, can we? No, I don't think... Oh, we can't run missions with our government form. So one of the things you can do with your shipyard is you can run a mission. Basically, you, you build an exploration ship to do a task, and you can have a ship built to go treasure hunting, for example. It's a way to make up some of your income deficiencies. So we still don't have a planet to do with this. Oh, there we go. Count as negative. Manufacturing and research have been crippled. Seriously? Are you brazenly going to try to incite our people to rebel right in front of us? Well, to be honest, I hope you wouldn't notice. So the idea is pretty smart. It'll notice, like, the influence sort of wars going on. Uh, is this my... That's my scout ship. Where's my... That transport ship. There's the freighter over here. So we're going to send it... I think that's a star base. Yeah, that's a star base. But somewhere over here is Alarian space. So just keep heading this general direction. So the Musquidians aren't going to be terribly pleased by this. Our first trade route! Woo! With minimal ceremony, the first of your trading frigates pushes away from its slip. It will bring back with it a small portion of the galaxy's wealth. The first in what will surely be a long series of profitable exchanges for your people. Um, thank goodness for that. We also do have some extra cash sitting around here from... things. I don't know. Whew. Great. Let's take a look at our government. What kind of government can we run? We're imperial. We could switch to media assimilation which would increase our calling limit, not that we need it now. Oh, it also gives us a smashingly huge extra influence growth. It will require that we start holding elections. We also can't declare war while it's running, but that's okay. We'll also be able to run missions. This is a bonus to, it's a penalty to diplomacy, ship construction, more move. Yeah, no, we're gonna switch to media assimilation over here. Join our collective. Basically, uh, we're gonna be, we're gonna open a giant YouTube channel and just convince our people like uh, that, you know, we're super awesome and stuff like that. You watch our entertainment and hunger for information about our celebrities. You wear our brands and care about the issues we tell you to care about. You are already one of us. So yeah, more influence, more colonies, which will be good when we do finally settle something again. We'll require elections, which will require people to be happier, but I think we'll get there. Let's do it. Boom. Did it, uh... Oh no, it didn't take... I have to hit the change government button. Oh, I can't change it for three turns. Well, well, well. And we'll get a notice, I think. There'll be an exclamation mark letting us know that we can make a change. Uh, ooh, the Thalen Contingency. Greetings, Quillian. Choose solar systems you explore. Choose how to colonize new worlds. And choose your allies most carefully of all. 
Uh, space is more than large enough for the both of us. So yeah, changing our government will also help us get better trade deals. Because we'll get a diplomacy boost. Now, since we have a little bit of money, this station right over here... Oh, I, can't, I still can't do this. What do I need? I need Promethean to be able to get the cultural forms upgraded. All right. Have we found any anywhere? I think that's Promethean over here. So what we really need is we just need more colony ships, or uh, constructor ships, which means we need more administrators, which will hopefully come soon. One more week. One more week, we'll get someone else. Excellent. Document the most powerful civilizations in the world. We are not even on the list. Aren't you telling me the Musquidians are the most powerful civilization in the game? They're next to us and cranky with us? Oh, we're boned. Okay, we need administrator. Wow. You're idle. Well, I need more defensive ships, but I also want constructors, unfortunately. So we're going to have to just hope that we can get that going. Uh, yeah, we're super screwed. <laughs> Doom! That's what we have to look forward to. Well, Kane's super unhappy with that, huh? Well, we're working on the Intimidation Center. It's going to be a long time before we get there. That's our colony ship. Uh, we'll try another star over here. All right. More shopping options. Well, let's get some defensive systems, because apparently we might need a little bit of that. There's the cultural relic over here. Yeah, I'm going to want to claim all that. Trade offer. So you're going to give us money and stellar folding. Allows construction of the ultimate hyperdrives. Uh, yeah, this is actually insane. This is a super late game tech. 34 turns. He wants, like, all of my technology. I'm absolutely going to take it. That's actually really good. And it's going to affect our ship design. Oh, government is under unlocked. Change government. Oh, information oligarchy is also available. The media is our weapon. By harnessing the power of our communication network, we have discovered that we don't need a perfect government to make our citizens happy. We only need the propaganda of a perfect government. This would give us a unique ship, the Invisible Hand. It gives us a 10% boost to influence growth. Now, I don't think 10% boost is going to be better than a plus 10 flat growth. Um, it gives us 20% more value from our trade routes. Hold elections. Also unlocks cryptocurrency galactic market. Oh, where we can buy and sell these resources. And contracts. So, do we want media simulation? Or do we want information oligarchy? I think media assimilation will be a little stronger with the plus 10 influence growth. Although the invisible hand ship, I think, is quite cool too. Yeah, either way, there's going to be elections. We've got one vote for IO, information oligarchy. Info oligarchy. Okay, everyone wants information oligarchy. Done. We'll be able to change again in uh, half a year if we decide that that is not the way to go. Alrighty. Done and done. So the invisible hand over here... Uh, the invisible hand is capable of monitoring the financial transactions of the entire planet. Makes this data available to every investor, no matter how small, and everyone with a financial need so they can trade seamlessly. This provides plus 100% income to the planet it orbits. So it, we're going to put it in orbit around Quilia over here. Thump. So we're going to get more money, which is great. We're still losing money right now, but we have quite a bit in the bank. I'm going to bring our tax rate down to about 30%. Improve some of the morale a bit, but not much. Garden of Sinners is, is happy now, though. I think we built the, uh, the healing pools. Uh, this colony is idle. Okay, your population capped right now. With 100% approval, you have more than 5 approval. I think it'd be a great time for us to go and build another city over here. 
We'll build it here. Cities boost anything they're adjacent to. So if we build it here, they'll boost both research centers. That's going to be fine. They also get boosted. Uh, the city itself gets boosted from being next to the arable land. So I think that's going to be a great option for us. More population equals more raw production. That's going to make this planet a lot stronger. Yeah, I love this game too, but I think the start is not going to be good. <laughs> I think we might be boned. 